Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna get back on Project Rum Runner. If you watched the last video, you saw that I got that passenger side front fender painted. It's been green and bugging me for a long time. It's had overnight to cure. It's looking pretty good. But today, we're gonna work on the back for the final time. I wanna get this finished up, get the bed put back on for the final time. And then that's one last thing I have to worry about and one step closer to me getting it to the show April 15th. Speaking of shows April 15th, if you haven't heard about it yet, the truck gathering, Norman, Oklahoma, I'm sponsoring the show. I'll be there. I'm inviting every single one of you to come out and see the show, meet me, whatever you want to do. All the registration spots for trucks are sold out, but spectators are free. There's going to be, I want to say there's like between 50 and 70 truck related vendors there everything you can think of the main sponsor of the show is lmc go to the website links in the description and it has a list of all the vendors that are going to be there on it but there's going to be a lot of vendors there and uh it's going to be a really cool show hopefully you can make it out but if you don't already know this is project rum runner and i'm trying to get this truck done to be at that show april 15th well it's like february 15th so i've got two months and a long way to go so to finish up the back here i need to c-notch the frame because i did the axle flip and then i'm going to get rid of the stock shock mounting locations and i'm going to put my own shocks i'm going to run a shock relocation bar across the back here and then have both shocks on the back of the axle angled back a little bit and angled in a little bit and that should give me the geometry that it needs to make it similar to what it had with the posing shocks and it'll give it a lot better ride so i'm gonna get uh started on taking these brackets off the old shock mounting brackets there's some exhaust hangers i'm not going to use anymore there's some more stuff back here i'm going to go ahead and get started get all that stuff off we'll get this thing jacked up get the wheels off of it and uh start doing our thing Okay, before I go any further, I want to take and kind of square off my square here, and then I'm going to mark on the frame so I know where the edges of my rear end are going to be. do the same thing on the other side and then I'll get this thing jacked up get the wheels out of the way and then we'll start doing the notch well I got everything off the frame that I'm not going to need or don't want anymore you saw I showed you I marked it where my rear end's going to be when it comes up and uh, I'm doing this notch a little bit different than the last one I did here on the channel instead of making my square or rectangle bracket out of steel i'm going to use some four inch pipe this is 
It's probably 3 16 quarter wall, 4 inch. I'm going to cut it a half an inch. I'm going to make this a half an inch wider than the frame here. And that'll give me a quarter inch of excess sticking out on both sides and give me a good spot to weld. So I'm going to get this cut to size and then I'll just cut it down the middle and have two pieces and then I can go ahead and set it up here and I'll trace it out wherever it may be and then I will cut the frame out we'll weld that in and then we'll plate the inside I also went ahead and got the wiring and the brake lines off of that side so I don't cut into them when I'm cutting and things are moving along so I'm gonna get my measuring tape out do some measuring get my chop saw out get that cut and then we can start uh, cutting the truck up some more this the best that I can because my darn audio guy forgot to turn the microphone on but what I'm saying here is I have my half piece of four inch pipe that I marked in the center and now I'm gonna measure the width of the marking that I put on my frame for clearance for the rear end and I'm measuring at the bottom and the top of my marks to make sure that they're equal distance apart Therefore, making sure it's square. And I don't know what I'm doing with all these hand gestures, but I'm sure I had good intentions and it meant something. So, I'm measuring it, like I said. And it looks good. The measurements are the same, both at the bottom and the top. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mark the center of those marks. I'm probably still talking about something that not necessarily required, but I have my measurement. I mark the center. And then I'm going to take my half piece of pipe and line up my center that I have marked on the half a piece of pipe with the center that I marked on my frame. And then I'll go ahead and trace that out. And now it's ready to cut. Well, I just found out that sometime between the last time I used my plasma cutter and now, the cord that comes out for the trigger got damaged and I didn't know it so we're going to move on to the next best thing I didn't really want to cut it with a torch because for one it's going to cause me a lot more cleanup and two I don't really want to be blowing flames all over the place but it'll be easier to cut it with this than it will be to try to cut it out with a cutoff wheel or something and get my radius so I'll just cut it back far enough that you know I've got to clean up quite a bit and should be fine.
got everything all cleaned up. I got my notch tacked in place. And now I got a piece of cardboard. I went ahead and traced the other notch half that I had. So I can set it in here on this one. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, I don't really need to do that. I'll take this and mark that across there. Now, I marked that at the top of the rail, and I actually want it to be, I want it to sit inside of it just a little bit so I can have a step weld there. So I'm going to cut it just a little bit shorter than what I marked it. Nice thing about a welder is, is if it's under a quarter inch gap, you can fill it. So, I'm trying to be precise here, but it doesn't have to be, you know, NASA grade or anything like that. I've had this conversation with people before, and I'll just run it by you guys real quick. But, I'm doing this for strength, and in my opinion, it does need it. But people have given me all kinds of crap in comments and everything else about how I support the frame when I cut them and uh, that I ruin the frames and you know yada 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 same stuff over and over and over again this frame being C channel basically I could cut that notch out walk away bolt the bed back on which you gotta think of the bed as a big support brace because it's bolted in four spots all the way down the frame so it's basically like a unibody, like the bed is holding the frame straight. And the frame isn't going to break like this because the leaf springs are pushing up on it. So if anything, it would bend the frame out, which it can't do because the bed is supporting it and holding it down. So the whole, it's not safe to be on the road anymore. I ruined it. You didn't do it right yada 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 is all nonsense I've done a ton of these I've never even had a weld crack on one and to my knowledge but I've done my own stuff driven it around all over the place I did a four by I shortened a four by four one time we off-roaded it everything else never had a weld crack never had a problem and it's not as big a deal as everybody makes it out to be now okay it, I mean it's I'm not trying to start an argument I'm not trying to say I know better than anybody else or whatever all I know is what I do to these things is more than adequate for what it needs to be so and to all the people that told me, oh, I'm, I'm glad I don't live by you because I don't want to drive on the same road as that truck and yada, yada, yada. I'm glad to. All right. I got my template made up. It fits. I'm going to end up cutting this out with the torch also. So it's probably not going to be perfect, perfect. The joy of it being metal is need a little more off, take a little more off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this traced onto a piece of steel that I have and we'll get it torched out. And hopefully, if I did this right, I should be able to take this template and use it again on the other side and it should fit perfect but that would mean I did a good job and eh, we'll see what happens
Okay. I got some quarter inch steel plate here, which is goes another semi truck. Got some quarter inch steel plate here, which is kind of way overkill because the frame itself is like eighth inch. But that's okay. We're just adding strength. Not planning on racing this thing, so I'm not worried about weight or anything like that. So I'm just gonna take my template. Trace it out on here. Okay, we'll let that cool off for a while and then uh, I'll take a grinder to it, get it all cleaned up and we'll see how it fits. Okay, I got my piece all ground down, got it fitted, got the frame cleaned up. It's tacked in obviously. So now I'm just going to go back and weld all along here. Weld all along here, weld around here, and then I'll go back on the outside and weld around my notch, finish welding around my notch where I tacked it in before. So just gonna go ahead and get it done. This side all finished up, notches all welded in, welds look okay, I know they're strong, got it welded all the way across the top, all the way across the bottom, all the way around the pipe, and then the, in there, so that side's done, then we walk over here to this side and 
hasn't even been started so that just tells me i got work to do that side turned out good i'm gonna do the exact same thing that i did over there over here get it knocked out and then we'll move on all right well got my notch all done on both sides got everything cleaned up turned out good it's all back together here's the side i didn't do on camera i still have to remount my rear brake line but my holes for it are behind there so i'm thinking about pulling that tab back out the bracket that holds the brake line on putting some nut zerts in it and then i can just hold it in place and run the bolts in from outside the frame but this side's all done you guys already saw that so the next thing i'm gonna do is my shock relocation so my original plan was to basically copy a shock relocation bar that you would order from you know one of the speed shop type places or something and mount it in the frame and do that but hang on we got another loud semi driving by okay that was my plan mount it to the frame rail and then put my original shock mounts back on the frame but in a different spot where i wanted them but now that i put the notches in and put my reinforcements plates back in i would have to have that bar for the shocks back really far and i do want an angle on my shocks but not that much you can see here by the time i put my shock mounting tab down here the shock would have to come way back like this to get to where i could mount it so what i'm thinking about doing now is just taking my cross brace and welding it in here between my plates because that's plenty solid for the mount and then i'll put my mounts my mounting tabs off the bar put my mounting tabs down on the axle and we'll put the shocks in so these are the shocks that i got for it they're adjustable ride tech fox got a bunch of different names on them i guess they're fox shocks that ride tech uses but that's what i'm planning on using i need to take some measurements on them and see how far apart my mounts need to be so that i you want to i don't know if i'm right about this or not but this is just the way i always do it but when you go to mount a shock that's not in the stock location i always take them and bring it down so half of the travel is gone or so you're at like halfway through the travel and that's where i mount them and that way they have travel up equal travel up and down so i don't know if that's right like i said that's the way i do it so first thing i want to do is get the old axle mounts that i cut off all cleaned up i'm going to get them tacked in place where i want them and then i can put the bottom of the shocks in and then i'll kind of know where the top needs to be and i can figure that out so another thing there's possibilities for severe storms so much so that they let my kids have off school today they shut the school down because the storms were coming and it doesn't look at all stormy to me but you never know so the possibility for severe storms tornadoes if one does come i'll go stand outside with the camera and film it for you and may not make it to a video because it may take me away but there will at least be footage flying around somewhere of a tornado up close so i'm gonna get to work all right well this quick little project i was gonna do turned out to not be so quick oh excuse me or little but i did some research and according to 
multiple spots that I found on the internet, shocks perform their best when mounted at 90 degrees to between the frame and the axle, 90 degrees. So that's straight up and down, which kind of sucks because the shocks are a little bit long for that application. But at the same time, it's kind of nice because it buys me more room with the brake hose on the driver's side. Either way, I'm gonna mount them at 90 degrees, like I found is supposedly the best way to do it. And I'm still gonna do it the same way that I was gonna do it, but I can't use the stock brackets off the rear end because they're not long enough. So I have to make lower shock mounts and upper shock mounts instead of just upper shock mounts. No big deal, I got some two by two square tube makes great shock mounts done it a million times so i just got to make it get it done but i already measured for my cross member for the top got it cut i got the plates all ground down ready to weld on so i just have to get this in there get it trued up get it welded no big deal and then i started making my lower mount i got it cut to go on the axle but i realized that i don't know exactly where i need to place it until i get the top bar put in and get the shock mounts put on the top bar and get the shocks hanging and then I can go under there and get the angle of the dangle and the hoo hoo and the ha ha and uh -uh, you know where they need to go so I'm gonna get this top bar welded in I'm probably gonna go ahead and get one shock done because I'm flying by the seat of my pants here I'll get one shock all done and mounted and then I'll show you guys the process of what I'm doing on the second one so i'm going to get that welded in i'm going to get some upper tabs shock mounts made and uh get some shocks hanging and then we'll go from there all right just get you guys up to date on what i'm doing i went ahead and got that cross member all welded in it turned out pretty good I figured out my geometry and I might have already told you this but I did a bunch of research online and it says that shocks perform the best when they're 90 degrees so straight up and down that's what I'm doing so I took some 2x2 two two square tubing and I kind of mimicked the old mount that I had for the lower and made it longer so it will be the right length for my shock so now i just gotta cut out the second one my buddy down the road's got a plasma table he's cutting me out tabs for the top shock mounts and then once i get the second one of these made he gets back with those we'll uh, be ready to mount some shocks i got one down and uh turned out good got my upper mounts put on Got my lower mount that I made, put on, shock fits in there nice. It does what it's supposed to do. I don't have the right bolts in it. I'm gonna have to get some other bolts, but, and I probably should have put this brake line back where it goes before I put the shock in, cause I bent it out of the way so I didn't burn it. But either way, it'll be fine. Welds came out halfway decent and uh, I'm happy with it. I think it looks good. It's 90 degrees like it's supposed to be. Sorry guys, let me get out of here. 90 degrees. Straight up and down. Turned out good. I gotta leave for the day to go and uh, take care of some personal stuff that needs to be done. So I'm not going to get the other side done. So I'll come back first thing in the morning. I'll go step by step through that whole process, 
with you guys so you can see how I made everything and what I did. Get that other shock on and then we'll be done with this project. All right, I'm back and uh, ready to get this project done. So it's cold outside this morning, uh, like 35, 36 degrees, something like that. So I've been trying not to do any kind of metal work, fab work, welding, anything like that in the shop because I don't want the dust and everything all over everything. But I'm thinking I'm not going to push the truck outside today because it's windy, it's cold, and just not into that. So I am going to do my cutting and grinding outside, but I can knock that out pretty quick. And then I'll just weld in here, which welding shouldn't hurt anything anyways. So as I showed you, the other side's done. I have to clean up my tabs and drill a hole in them for this side. I got to make my lower mount for this side. Weld them on and put the shock in. So there's nothing better to do now than get started. All right, I got my upper shock mounting tabs here that my buddy cut out for me on his plasma table. I just kind of drew up a rough design and he slapped it in his machine, cut them out. So I just got to clean up the edges and uh, punch a hole in them. Okay, got both of those cleaned up. Now I'm going to stack them perfectly together. Put them into my drill press over here. Then I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I put my hole, what I, did on, what I did on the other side. So hopefully I eyeball it about the same as I eyeballed the other side and it comes out close. back over here and clean up little birds from the drill bit. Tabs all cut out, they're ready to go. Next thing I gotta do, I traced the other lower mount that I made onto this bar. And the way I got this outline and everything is I took the original shock mount that I cut off of the rear end and I held it up 
on the rear end, put my shock in where I needed it to be, and I noticed it was about an inch to an inch and a half more length that I needed. So I marked this upper line that's going to go on the rear end here at the length that I needed from the hole, and then I set my mount down there and lined it up where the hole was going to be and then traced it so I can just kind of get the same look, I guess you'd say. So I got to put this in the drill press and pop that hole through it and then we'll take it out and get after it with the grinder and uh, finish making it up. if you put it in your vise so that it's not going to hit the vise if you try to go through it. Not that it matters, but this switch I got on my drill press right now is just temporary because when I moved, the wires got ripped out of the back of the switch on it, and I got it bolted to the table, and I've been busy slash too lazy to unbolt it and lift it up to hook it back up, so I just grabbed the switch and temporarily did that. But anyways, enough of the BS. We're going to take this outside. Cut off wheel, make what we need to make. All right, got my grinder with a cut off wheel on it. I'm just going to take and rough cut my shape out, and then I'll go back with a grinding disc and clean everything up. Lower shock mount all cut out, ready to weld on. Now I'm going to clean up my mess and get back inside where it's a little bit warmer. I already got my pipe all cleaned up here, ready to weld, and the rear ends ready to weld from when I sanded it all down after I ground everything off. So, what I'm going to do is come over here and measure where I put my tabs. And it's exactly four inches. So I'll come over here, measure over four inches. And then I figured out when I did the other side yesterday that the gap that I need in between the tabs for the shock to fit in is exactly two big nuts and four washers. So I'll take this, put it on here, put my spacers in between it, 
put a nut on just to hold them together. Now I'm not cranking down on this nut super tight because I want these to be able to move a little bit because that way when I put them up against my bar and they sit in the saddle here it'll square them, it'll true them up, make them helps if you put them on the right way. It'll, what I'm saying is it'll make them straight. So put that in there like so make my nut snug but loose enough that it can move around a little bit and then got my welder all set up now Now I'll take this, set it on my mark there, with my spacers holding it where it needs to go. I'll eyeball it about the same height as the other side. Then I'm going to put, then I'm going to put four good tacks on it. out of the way like I did on the other side and then I'll take this set it in there and uh, eyeball it up so it's straight with the top one make it so that it's straight with the one on the other side so we're at the same angle and everything and then we'll tack that weld tack weld that on we'll put our shock in Make sure everything's lining up and looking good. Then we'll weld it up. Okay, I had to fine tune my mount a little bit. It wasn't exactly where I wanted it, so. Get it cut back off, I'll get it tacked back on, and then we'll continue. Okay, I got that all straightened out, back on where it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick the shock in here real quick. Make sure everything fits like it's supposed to. Maybe. And I don't have the right bolts right now. I'm going to have to get bolts, but I can do that later on. Alright, got it in. 
looks exactly the same as the other side everything looks good so now I'll pull it back out pull the shock back out I'll put my spacer back in here so when I weld this up it don't suck it together make it too tight and then uh, then we'll pretty much be through with this so. Alright, time to turn the welder back on and get to welding. Got it all welded up, welds look okay, not gonna take any pictures and add them to weld pages, but they look alright, welded up good, everything's good, when I put the new bolts in the shocks, I'll put that brake line back where it's supposed to be, but I don't have the right bolts right now, so I'm gonna have to go, I gotta measure and see exactly how long they need to be. And I'll go get some, but that ain't no big deal. It's done. C notch is finished. Shock relocation's done. I literally just have to bolt the shocks in, which ain't no big deal. And uh, it's gonna be good. So I had a lot of fun doing this project. I hope you guys had fun watching it. I hope maybe you learned something if you were looking to do something similar or the same thing. And uh, Hope it was good for all of us. But um, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment. Please subscribe if you're not. It helps a lot to help the channel grow the subscriptions and the comments, especially the comments and the likes. Hit the like button too. Because we're trying to make this channel get bigger. And I'm hoping you guys can help me do that. But if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time.